Uh, thank you, Jonathan, for the introduction. And I'm Li Kuan. I'm currently a database engineer uh, in PingTab. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about task cloud native services with CalSmash. And here are the key takeaways for this uh, presentation. Uh, I think uh, I think the number one takeaway will be that ensure correctness in distributed system is very hard. So that's why we, we you should care about CalSmash. And CalSmash is a tool for Cal engineering without application changes. And this is super critical for the adoption, especially in the Kubernetes environment. And the third one is that CalSmash has been adopted extensively to test distributed systems, including TiDB. Uh, why you should care about Kios Engineering. And in, in the next couple of slides, I'll talk about why you should do so. I think the key thing is that, as I mentioned, this distributed system is very complex. And here you can see that it is, uh, this is actually the, uh, the topology of the servers within Amazon Netflix. And this is a real service. You can see uh, different services are kind of like uh, tangled and uh, uh, they are interconnected. There's a lot of dependency between services and any broken to any of the services will potentially cause the big outages. And, and a typical way to ensure the software is re resilient is uh, running tests. However, testing a distributed system is very difficult uh, because mainly because of like failures and the faults can happen anytime, anywhere, in any ways. And uh, because of the code handling those failure cases are rarely executed because of this. Uh, it's although it is uh, the fault uh, happens very frequently, but it still uh, is rarely executed code pass. And if, um, if we don't really test uh, that I execute that code pass a lot, then it will be very challenging to uh, ensure that those code pass are behavior correctly. And uh, what we really want for distributed systems and the databases are, we don't want the system to crash and we don't want to see data losses and we don't want to see the wrong results. Even those um, simple things are very hard to achieve in a distributed uh, environment where faults are happens uh, frequently, and this is actually some uh, real lessons uh, learned from running a large scale system. So you actually, in production, uh, people have seen such kind of things like uh, the network limits, network partitions, and then. Uh, there can be uh, a no or, or automated apps that create a large load to other applications. But there can also be very large requests and results, which is the outliers. And on the cloud, you often see the slow VM launches, shutdowns, and uh, you don't have the certain types of the VMs. For example, in case of Black Friday, and suppose that auto scaling will kick in and uh, add virtual machines of certain type. But sometimes it's just the case that there's the shortage of certain type of machines, which cause the auto scaling to be fail. And uh, I have seen some real, um, uh, this happens in real world in my previous companies. And also there can be data corruption right into cloud storage and this can also, uh, and in the development of pink apps, TiDB, uh, we have also seen this before uh, due to some kernel bugs. Even some rare issues can also happen in your work. For example, you can uh, see uh, entire AZ failures, maybe once in a while. You can also see S3 outages and the kernel bugs. Those are rarely happen, but those happen. When those things happen, it has very widespread effect to your system. And because those things are rarely, fed, very rarely uh, seen, it's hard to ensure that the code paths handling those issues are even there 
right? Or I handle things correctly. So that's why we need probably another methodology to ensure the systems, especially the distributed systems, are behaving correctly in case of those failures. So that's why the chaos engineering is invented to rescue. So chaos engineering is about breaking things in a controlled environment and through well-planned experiment. And the goal is to build confidence in your application to withstand turbulent conditions, for example, to ensure that this application is behaved correctly under failures. And it's not about breaking things without a purpose. And, and, and so that is basically the chaos engineering methodology. And to sum up, here are the several the steps of running a chaos engineering. First of all, you start with the steady state of the system and you form some hypothesis and then you create some experiment. Typically the experiment involve introducing some failures to the system for example, randomly kill a part or randomly kill a machine or create a network partition or, or, or create some load on some machines to slow things down. And the goal is to uh, try to verify those hypotheses under those conditions and see whether the system behaves correctly. If everything behaves correctly, it's great. It means that your system, at least in this experiment in this running instance of experiment, they are behaved correctly. Otherwise, you may identify some bugs and the issues. And then this uh, gives the opportunity to improve the quality of the software because you can fix the issue and rerun those tests. And once those tests are passed, and then basically we have seen the quality of the software in, is improved and we have higher confidence of the software can tolerate those failures. Uh, in your world, this house has helped Netflix to uh, like uh, uh, kind of like uh, still being up in case of a severe AWS outage in 2015. So many companies actually suffered, including Amazon, because of this is a, a kind of like a database related uh, issue. But because Netflix has started their services with chaos engineering and is still on in this like uh, uh, outage. So I think based on this, Pinkhab has started doing this uh, chaos engineering very early on. And it starts with an in-house system called Schrodinger. Uh, you can see from the name, right? The goal is to see whether um, the Schrodinger, the cat, uh, basically, you can think about this our software can withstand some kind of like uh, chaos conditions. So that's where the name come from. It mainly used internally, and the goal is to make sure that the system is behaved correctly, especially our database is uh, behaved correctly under uh, failure conditions. And that helps a lot, right? You can see from the, the bugs has been identified in TidyB by Schrodinger from 2018, 2020. I think those are good things because if you discover the bug in your test environment, which means that your system will be have higher quality once it's released and once it's deployed in production. So I think this has been helpful, but this is the first kind of like a, a phase of cast engineering in PinCat. And now uh, let's under cast match, which is what we had which is a tool we are using now for doing chaos mesh. And we actually open source it so that not only Pinkup can benefit from it and many other companies can use it to test other distributed systems. So chaos mesh is built with, born with TIDB, but not just for TIDB. It's a cloud native chaos engineering platform for Kubernetes environment. And it's already a cloud native computing foundation product. Uh, from the company perspective, it has more than 4,000 stars with over 120 contributors and is still growing and currently is in the sandbox status of the CNCF project. Uh, why we are kind of like a evolve 
from Schrodinger to Chaos Mesh. I think it's related to the Kubernetes environment as well as some specialties about the container environment. Typically in the Kubernetes cluster, you have like uh, many application clusters compared with the, you, you usually deploy in the virtual machine environment. And there usually has larger scale, there are maybe more nodes. And in that environment, many target objects can fail. For example, the containers, the pods, network, disk, even system clocks. So, and also because of this, we do need to run more experiments because there are more applications there. And the challenge is that how to manage and schedule those experiments in an effective way so that they don't interfere with, with each other and don't break things in a way that cannot be controlled. Uh, there are some other regions that we want using Kill Smash because in Docker, the environment is very different from physical nodes. And a lot of tools that are available that can be used to inject failures is not available in the container environment. Then we do have to uh, simulate those failures in another way, typically by uh, modifying the uh, system calls or some things like that. What is Chaos Mesh, right? We talk about why we did uh, kind of evolve from shilling to Chaos Mesh. Now let's talk about what is Chaos Mesh. So it has the following key features. First of all, it's cloud native. And if you are familiar with Kubernetes and the way that you run Chaos, Chaos Engineering experiment is easy, it will be very apparent to you because all the Chaos objects are managed by CRDs and the uh, controllers. And we are we, we have a lot of built-in uh, and extensible cost match capabilities like uh, at the IO level, kernel level, and uh, application level. Uh, it's also very easy to use. You can see you can use it to through the UI and also through the just apply the CRD. And we also allow different roles in the uh, in running Kill Smash so that you don't have admin privileges to inject those failures. And and last but not least, that Kill Smash is open source, and there is no wonder locking if you adopt Kill Smash. Uh, here is a list of uh, building uh, experiments that we have developed in Kill Smash. This includes uh, injecting failures to pod, for example, you can kill pod, and you can also simulate like network latencies, network partitions, and network like a packet loss. Uh, you can also in introduce stresses to the system such as CPU burn, memory burn, and, on and, and also in introduce kernel failures. So this set of like the chaos experiment is a good starting point for you to run extensive chaos experiment to ensure your system is, is behave correctly. And here is the architecture of uh, chaos mesh. So it is uh, at a high level, uh, those chaos objects can be submitted uh, through the dashboard or directly uh, as a YAML submitted to the chaos uh, controller manager. And then this chaos demo who will be uh, the major role that will ingest the failures to the application container within the pod. And now let's talk about, uh, go, go quickly through a demo that demonstrates how you can use chaos, chaos mesh to inject failures. Uh, before I talk about demo, I want to quickly introduce uh, the architecture of TiDB. Uh, so 
if you haven't heard about it, TidyB is a distributed database and uh, it was developed by Pinkab like a couple of years ago. So it is a hybrid transactional and identical database. So from the high level, it offers a MySQL compatible where protocol. You can actually use the MySQL client to connect it, connect to it, and then issue queries. And from the user perspective, it's just like a single node database. But under the hood, it actually is a di distributed architecture. The system can scale up, scale down by adding more nodes or remove some nodes. You can also handle failures uh, in case something fails. For example, if the storage node is fail, then then under the hood, the data replicas will be more will be recreated in other uh, other like uh, nodes. So that that's kind of high level architecture. At the high level, it has uh, three major components. Uh, so why is the front end like uh, a user facing? We call it TDB servers, which will accept those uh, SQL queries, doing query parsing, query execution. And then, uh, and we also have a storage layer will store the data in a column, columnar format and row format. And we do have a placement driver. You can think about placement driver is the brain of the cluster, which will be used to uh, handle failures so or handle scale up, scale down. So it is a distributed system, right? And we want this, it, it's a distributed database. And uh, because TIDB is designed to power critical applications, it is critical to ensure that TIDB can tolerate failures and they behave correctly and they don't cause crashes, they don't cause uh, data corruption and they don't, call the, they don't return wrong results uh, to the system. Basically the simple requirement of uh, people is part to the database. And in order to do so, we actually do extensive testing and uh, with Chaos Mesh on TIDB and ensure TIDB is behaved correctly. So here I'm going to do a demo. It's a recorded demo. And, uh, and then and the goal is to show that and the TIDB Thai Thai is actually resilient to storage failures. Okay. So uh, in the experiment, what we are going to do is to randomly queue a pod. And we will see whether TDB can uh, tolerate that failure. So this is what I'm going to do. Uh, so basically, first we'll install Chaos Mesh to the system, and when we will run a pod Chaos, and the action is basically queue a pod, and we only queue the pod uh, one pod from the from the storage node, and then we want to kill the pod on every five minutes. Every five minutes will kill a pod. Uh, so here are a few things we'll configure with this action, with, with the pod chaos. Uh, you can do pod kill or pod failures, and you can kill one pod, you can create kill a fixed percent of the pods. And you can also control the blast radius. For example, you can kill a pod, for example, because we have three components, we have TDB nodes, TKV nodes, right? We can kill a random pod from all these uh, different like, uh, components, but you can also limit your scope to just one uh, kind of like a, a component. For example, in this here, we just select a random pod from the TKV pods, and we want to do it every five minutes. So this is pretty easy to run, and you have two ways to do it, as I described. The first way is just using Cooper Control to apply this YAML file describing this CRD, right, and submit to the Kubernetes cluster. And it's also very easy to just delete this or terminate this experiment, just delete this pod, uh, similar as you do with other resources or other or how you deploy your managed services in Kubernetes. And, and the effect is that so. Assuming that we're running some workload with TIDB. And basically, the expected behavior is that once you kill a pod, especially kill one TIDB node, right? And the goal is that you don't want to see the first, of the, the first thing you expect that there won't be data loss, right? 
And the second thing you want to see that actually there can be short uh, kind of like a disruption to the system is because like once you kill a pod, because there are data on it, right? Then you need uh, to create a new pod and try to move the data to the new pod. And there are actually some background traffic around it. And there can be some short disruptions to your system, but the system can recover very fast because it's a temporary failure and the system knows how to handle it. And the expectation is that you have seen some dip in the QPS on the load and then it recover, recovers, it deep it recovers. That's its expected behavior. And this is something we want to try to verify with the experiment. So for example, this is a kind of record demo of killing a pod. And you can see from this uh, uh, kind of like a dash uh, screen that we want to kill, randomly kill a pod of TechEV. And here are the difference that we want to do it every two minutes. And then we start the experiment. And you can see that, uh, so basically TechEV zero is killed because its lifetime is uh, just 10 seconds. And you can see there's a small dip and then it's come back. And uh, this means that TechEV can handle this gracefully, gracefully because there's just a trending like a uh, QPS down and then it come back. So this is uh, what we want to do. This is what we specify. And then this and this environment verify TDB can tolerate pod failures. And it can handle it very gracefully. And you can also view the, all these things in the chaos mesh kind of the dashboard. And you can also hook this up with uh, GitHub Actions. So if you want to verify, right? Basically you have hooked up to CSAD and then you run some uh, experiments. Uh, if this fails, then the GitHub will not be able to pass. Then you have to check your code, whether it's behaved correctly. But if pass, then it means that we have run those experiments on the, on, on the code. And we, at least with this run of the experiment, uh, the code uh, behaves as it should be. And then this gives uh, a developer high confidence that the system is resilient. So the kill smash can be used in many scenarios. And the first scenario is can definitely simulate failures, right? For example, network partitions and um, available low failures and ensure the system is behave as it should be. And the other thing, you can also simulate network latency. And this is maybe more interesting because usually um, uh, we want to know that how the system behave, for example, how tight we be behaves in case of like it deployed in multiple regions. However, this may take some like uh, uh, effort to deploy tight in multiple regions, especially if you are not running on cloud, you actually need to have two physical data centers in order to do this experiment. It's costly, it takes time, and it's also not very efficient. So based on this, uh, you can actually use Kill Smash to uh, introduce latencies between components to simulate how this works and, and without an adi incurring additional cost. So TIDB has been integrated uh, both internally and externally. Internally, we have Tide Pocket. I'll, I'll talk more about this in a second. And externally, TIDB has been adopted by uh, or integrated by Chaos Mesh. You can actually um, uh, uh, use Chaos Mesh in the Azure's Chaos Studio. It also has been adopted by other open source projects like uh, uh, data, data stacks, and this is data stacks like the testing framework, Chaos testing framework. Uh, so this is uh, uh, the tool TIDB is using to ensure it is resilient to failures and we call it type pocket. So the idea is that uh, we can run some workflows, define some workload flows, and the goal is to ingest those failures and using Chaos Mesh to uh, and, and run through a set of experiments, for example, the Ledger and the Bank and the SQL Smith. Though the uh, important testing that I sent, that has been used by many databases to ensure its correctness. And going through this test and their failure conditions ensure that TIDB behaves correctly. 
So that is important, right? We, we run this on a daily basis to ensure that we is uh, resilient to those failures and make sure it producing correct result. And the goal is to make sure TIDB satisfy people's need. And this can be a very resilient uh, database. Yeah. Well, TIDB has been adopted uh, by many companies worldwide. You can see from this, you can see there's a few uh, internet companies like uh, Bydance by, by and, by, uh, and uh, Tencent, also by a few infrastructure companies like Datastax, uh, uh, like uh, Fushi Labs and Juice FS, Percona and uh, Pauser. So those are other adoptions. Uh, next, I'll talk a little bit about the use case the TIDB uh, chaos match can be uh, can be helpful. So here are four categories. So it can be used to test the on the cloud native databases, message queues, and the AI ML operation platforms, and also the CSAD platforms. Uh, I will quickly go through maybe one or two use cases. So I think I, I think I, at first I think I want to talk about these data stacks like a platform, and they are actually using Chaos Match to test their cloud database offerings. They call it Astra Serverless, uh, based on Cassandra. So they have been uh, tried to using Chaos Match and. Uh, and, and the testing the NoSQL bench under failure cases and uh, ensure that the, 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 the data stack actually meet the availability and the requirements. Similar with RabbitMQ, they want to see how RabbitMQ behaves under network latency. In this case, actually the chaos match can help uh, simplify those tasks because you can introduce the latency very easily. Uh, similar with this one. Yeah, that's all I have. Yeah, thank you.